Welcome back. So here we are at How to Buy Eyeglasses Online, Part 2. Yesterday, we discussed how to get the prescription, the information you need in order to order your glasses, how to use your optometrist or optical center to select frames, it's what they're there for, um, and how to initially start your frame selection from the various companies you might be considering. Now, you also have a list of four companies, and I'm going to add them to this video too in the notes. Four companies, I am not recommending these companies at all. They're just companies I have used in the past, and I can tell you I had good experiences with them. So, when we come back, we're going to talk about the more technical aspects of buying glasses online. I'm going to start with prescriptions. So, when we get back. All right, your prescription uh, can look exactly like mine or very different. There, in other words, it all depends on how your optometrist writes it. It's all going to have roughly the same information, though. Sometimes they put it in a grid. Sometimes they write it all out by hand. The format isn't important. The information is. And it's going to be a series of numbers, and the numbers are linked up to each of your eyes. This one, which is my right eye, is the OD, Oculus Dextrous. It comes from the Latin. They've just been using those terms forever. Um, I understand some people are now using R-E-L-E, -E, right eye, left eye, but traditionally OD, Oculus Dextrous. OS, Oculus Sinistris. What a load left-handed people have to deal with. Right-handed people are dexterous. Left-handed people are sinister. Hmm. All right. Just ancient anti-lefty prejudices. Ooh. So you're going to have a series of numbers that may or may not be identified uh, in general, they are in a certain order, so the first one is going to be the number, which is your sphere. That's the power, um, the strength of your glasses. If you are nearsighted, the number is going to be preceded by a minus sign. If you are farsighted, it's going to be preceded by a plus sign, but there will be a plus or a minus in there somewhere. It'll be like minus 6.50 or plus 2.25. That's what it's going to look like. And that's the sphere number. The next one is the cylinder number. You might not have a cylinder number. The cylinder number is for your astigmatism. Now, if you have an astigmatism, that's a, an irregularity in the shape of your eye. If you have an astigmatism, uh, you'll have a number uh, and you'll have a follow-up number, which is the axis number. And the first one tells you you have an astigmatism. The second one tells you where it is. Basically, that's the way it is. So you will have an axis number that, uh, that will be like, you know, 0.45. It's degrees, by the way. Um, and although they're usually not written in degrees, they're usually written as like 0.45 or 1.0 or something along those lines. So first three numbers. Um, you might have uh, an add, ADD, just like add and subtract, and that would be a bifocal or trifocal number. Um, and, oh, and by the way, you, your mail order eyeglasses company can do bifocals and trifocals and all this sort of stuff too, so don't worry about that. They know what to do with this information. And occasionally you may have a prism number. 
a prism number is rare. That's when your eyes are, are sufficiently out of alignment so that um, they need to make an adjustment. Um, rare. I, so you might not have one. If you don't have an astigmatism, uh, you're not going to have the cylinder or axis numbers. Um, if you don't have bifocals, you're not going to have that add number. If you don't have a discrepancy in the alignment of your eyes, you're not going to have the prism number. So for some people, all you're going to have is that sphere number. You know, one for the right, one for the left. How nice is that? When you take this information, and it will probably be on a piece of prescription paper, and remember, you ask them for your pupillary distance. That's going to be a number in centimeters that's probably going to be somewhere between about 55 and 75. Um, and it's how many centimeters your eyes are apart. Now, um, keep in mind, 55 to 75, that's just a general range. Your eyes could, in fact, be farther apart or closer together. It would be unusual, but it could be. So. Just keep in mind that in all likelihood, the pupillary distance will be a number somewhere in the 50s, 60s, or 70s. So, we've got all this information. We go into our um, account with our online glasses provider. And by the way, it doesn't hurt if you just load this information into every site you're dealing with. Let's face it, there's not a lot they can do with it. So it's not like you're handing anybody your bank account numbers or anything really dangerous like that. You're giving them your glasses prescription. You give them the information the way they want it, and they will say they, they have little forms and it says sphere number, and you look on your prescription, and it will say sphere number, OD, sphere number, OS. And if you can copy that straight through, you go right ahead and do it. They are not going to ask to see the actual prescription, amazingly enough. Um, which, again, goes back to what I was saying before. I'm not sure it's really necessary. I mean, it is if you want to get your glasses, but I'm not sure, you know, how critical having this as a prescription item really is especially if nobody ever wants to see the prescription, and they'll just take your word for it. If you cannot do this, if you cannot transfer the information, if it's not clear enough to you, you get on the phone and find out where you can send them a copy of the prescription, because they'll take it right off the prescription for you. Um, they might be able to walk you through the process on the phone if you're having trouble. Usually, it's pretty straight up. Your sphere number, and then your, your sphere, your cylinder, your axis, your add, your prism, if, if that's what you have, in that order. However, you don't want to make mistakes. So if there's any question in your mind about your ability to transfer this information over, you call their 1-800-HELPLINE and say, I'm having trouble. I have my prescription in my hand. Can you help me? And like I say, they're either going to walk you through it or they're going to say, here's how you can email us your prescription. Here's how you can fax us your prescription. Now remember, you can email a prescription. You don't need a fax machine to do any of this. Even if you don't have a scanner, you take a picture, a clear picture of your prescription with your cell phone and you can text it to them, you know. Um, you can certainly send emails on your cell phone, get their email address, email it to them, all through your cell phone. So you don't have to worry about not having a lot of high-tech equipment, um, you know, to transfer the information. They are not going to demand that you send it through a fax line. They are not going to demand that you scan the prescription. A snapshot will do. They'll be perfectly happy with that. So you will be able to give the prescription to them and have them fill it out for you if you need to. When they do, when they've got it filled out for you, 
go back in and look at it. And if you have to take notes on that prescription, go right ahead. Circle your little sphere. Draw a little line and say, this is the sphere. This is, you know, the cylinder. Because you should know what all of this information is. Um, it's not, your life doesn't depend on it or anything like that. But if you want to be able to order glasses and things like that, it's nice to know and it's nice to be able to transfer this information as you please. Being able to do this is going to save you a lot of money and all you have to do is figure out what's on a piece of paper this big. And as I said before, it's usually only five or six numbers. It's that easy. So, they've got your prescription now. When they have the prescription and you have chosen your frames, now this is when you're going to price shop and service shop from each of those companies you've chosen. Because you're not just going to go grab your glasses from the first company. And there might be a significant price difference between some of these companies. So, this is now where we're going to be astute consumers and start price shopping. You pick out your favorite pair of frames from each one of the three or four companies you've started off with. Could be five or six. It's up to you. Your favorites. And let's start loading them up. You got your frame. You've got your prescription on file, so now we know the basic cost of your prescription. Some people have override charges for their prescriptions. I read Braille. That's a big surprise, right? Of course they're going to charge me more. You know, it's not like, oh, well, I have this little pair of... No, I have this big pair of Coke bottle thick glasses. Of course they're going to charge me more. Duh. Some of you might be in the same situation. Take a look. Sometimes those cost overrides can be significant. Sometimes some companies don't have them at all. So we're just going to line up um, without ordering. We're just going to, to sort of line up a pair of glasses from each one of these companies. You've got your frame, your frame of choice. You've got your prescription. Now let's take a look at what else you might like. Do you want special scratch coatings? Do you want special, very thin, lightweight lenses? Do you want transition lenses that lighten and darken in the sun? By the way, if you go for those photochromic lenses, go for name brand only. Use transition or walk away. From personal experience, I'm going to tell you that the generics are not worth it. Don't you be. They might work for five or six months, but let's take a look at this. Look at the color on this. Let me get it over somewhere here. There we go. It doesn't wash out completely any longer. So. I would say from my own personal experience that I'm passing off to you, go with transitions or don't bother. Um, I, I find the transitions extremely useful. Uh, I can go in and out. My glasses change automatically. However, I've been wearing glasses for 60 years, which means that I have a lifetime of experience switching from regular clear indoor glasses to uh, prescription sunglasses outdoors. It can be done and that's something you should choose when you are looking at your glasses. And this is part of our whole comparison shopping experience. $120 for the transitions. In all likelihood, that would have been about um, half of the cost if I had gotten these without the transition lenses, which would mean I could, for the same money, get a pair of regular glasses and a pair of prescription glasses. Great. So, for me, it's not a dollar savings, 
it's a time and convenience savings. So, it was worth it. On some other prescriptions, you might find that the transition lenses cost significantly more than the cost of getting both a regular pair of plain glasses and a pair of prescription glasses, in which case you have to decide whether that excess cost is worth it to you. It is to me, but that's me. Um, other people may have totally different considerations. And also consider one more factor that I do want to throw out. No matter how good the transition lenses are, I don't care if they are the best on the planet. If you need really dark prescription sunglasses, you are much better off getting your prescription glasses separately. It's just a fact. And, of course, you will know this. If you are photophobic, light sensitive, you will know this already. Transition lenses may not be dark enough for you. Just throwing that out there. So now that we're, we are in our um, accounts, putting together our glasses, we're building it just, you know, just like we're putting together something from a Chinese menu, one from column A, one from column B. We will eventually get down to the bottom, and that's when we're going to get our final landed price. You're looking at three or four companies, you're going to get three or four prices, three or four different frames. I'm assuming they're roughly similar. I'm assuming you are looking at roughly the same services and the same extras, like scratch coating or hyper-thin lenses from each one of these companies. Now choose. Um, obviously, it's going to be a much easier choice when your price range is somewhere between, say, $50 and $150 than it is when your price range is somewhere between $400 and $600. Of course it is. This is going to be easy. You're going to be able to choose what you want. You're going to be able to afford some upgrades that might not have been in the cards for you if, in fact, those upgrades were bringing the price of your glasses up to $600. Um, if you have a family of glasses wearers and you are looking at $600 times four people times you know, every year or so, and no insurance or inadequate insurance, of course, things like scratch coating or hyper-thin lenses or little stray frills are not going to be in the cards for you. Hopefully, going online, they are going to be in the cards for you. So now that you're looking at your multiple pair of glasses, choose the one you want. Now, as I said before, you're looking at at least 10 days possibly more along the lines of two or three weeks to get your glasses. When you get your glasses, you're going to need to fit them to your face. Anybody who's worn glasses for any length of time knows how to do this all by themselves, period. In order to adapt your glasses to your face, you need a cup of hot water um, boil it on the stovetop, not the microwave. The microwave can get your water hotter than you expect. You drop the end piece into your hot water. You let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute. You take it out. This is going to be very flexible. You can bend it any way you want to. I start by bending right here where I want it to fit on my ears. So when I've got it, it's holding my glasses so they're not jiggling forward and backward. That's important to me. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust because one of my ears is higher than the other. By the way, almost everybody has one ear higher than the other. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop just this little end right here 
into my boiling water, take it out, and just make a little tiny bend in it. I'll do maybe a little on one side, a little on the other, get it nice and even. I'm done. It's that easy. It's much easier when you're doing it yourself than when somebody else is doing it. What you want is you want your glasses to be even across your eyes. And like I say, remember, one ear is likely to be a little higher than the other. I don't think anybody's ears are like exactly the same height, although it's possible, I guess. And you want, want this piece to cuddle your ear. Now, I say cuddle, and I use that word deliberately. You want it to just coast right along your ear. You don't want it to hurt. You don't want it to dig in. But remember, you're doing this. Somebody at a store is not doing it. So you're going to know if this hurts. If it hurts, back into the boiling water, move it out a little. It's remarkably easy. People are very daunted by this. But if you're wearing glasses, you know exactly what those glasses are supposed to feel like. You are the best person to do this. All you have to remember is you don't just grab them and bend. You soak them in hot water, well, boiling water, but you take it off the stove. It's no longer actively boiling. Soak it in boiling water, 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how much time it needs. Bend it gently. That's all. Now, what happens if you just can't bring yourself to do that? You trot right back to the optician, to lens crafters with your glasses. And by the way, your optometrist should do that for you because you're a patient. So you go in there and you say, this is my optometrist. Fix my glasses. They'll do it as a courtesy. You're their patient. It's that simple. What happens if they don't? I'd find another optometrist. I have to be honest with you. If, if I went into my optometrist's office with a pair of glasses I had purchased, purchased elsewhere, and they said, we're not, going to, we're not going to adjust them for you, I would look elsewhere. I, I seriously would, because as a patient of that optometry practice, I'm entitled to little courtesies like this. Um, would I consider offering to slip the girl five, ten bucks? Sure, of course I would. But I don't think that's necessary. So in most, in most cases, you're not going to have any trouble. If you do, take your business elsewhere. Um, I have... I have done this, by the way, other people have done this too, just brought glasses into lens crafters and said, could you help me with this? And people were just like, yeah, sure. It's seriously, it's not such a big deal. So please don't sweat that part. That's the easiest part of the process. And as I say, if you've been wearing your glasses for a long time, you know exactly the things that you like that you don't like you you will be able to tell every single pair of glasses that you had that didn't fit properly oh i hated those blue ones they just boom they dug in or do you remember those i couldn't stand them they just kept sliding back and forward and every time i would move they'd run down to the end of my nose and so on and so forth so hopefully you have enough information now to be able to do this um, when you have your glasses, everything's come in, glasses fit, everything's fine. This is when you need to get your backup glasses. Go on in and consider getting whatever for backup glasses. I'll usually go off and get a pair of frames that I like, nice frames, just something that's on sale or discount, whatever. I'm not really picky, mostly because I get glasses so much. It's, it's like it's like buying socks to me. Like, who really cares? If I get sick of them, I will give them to new eyes for the needy and get myself another pair. Get yourself a backup pair. Um, 
The backup pair does not have to have any of the scratch protection or super thin lenses or transitions or whatever. It needs to be a backup pair of glasses in case your glasses break that you've got something so you can still read, so you can still drive, so you can still walk down the street, yeah, in my case, without walking into a telephone pole, um, which I have not done in a long time, I'm proud to say. It's always valuable to have backup glasses, always. You never know what can go wrong. You break your glasses, and then where are you? So, I hope this has been valuable. I hope this has been useful. As always, let me know in the comments. And if we need to explore this further, I hope between the last two videos, I've given you enough to chomp on and, and at least go out and get your first pair of truly discount glasses. So let me know how you make out. And before we go, we'll do one. We're only doing one because we are short of time. I keep turning this book upside down, don't I? All right. A muck. Um, by the way, these are attitudes and emotions. I'm sure you must have noticed that. A muck, murderous frenzy. The famous 18th century British navigator, Captain James Cook, who was certainly a traveled gentleman, claimed that when a man ran a muck, it was all because of his jealousy of a woman. Whether this be true or not, our exotic word is borrowed from the Malay. In the Malay language, the term amok, A-M-O-Q, sometimes spelled A-M-O-K, is the term for a mental disease similar to paranoia. The victim of the seizure will go from a period of morbid depression into a state of murderous frenzy in which he will attack anyone in his path. This description contains the sense in which we use our word amok, and he is spelling it A-M-U-C-K. Interestingly enough, I believe that the Malay spelling A-M-O-K is now the preferred spelling, and it's now, we don't say run amok now as much as we say run amok, and we tend to pronounce that O a little more. All right, have a terrific day. Let me hear back from you. I definitely want to hear back from you if you have managed to get yourselves a pair of eyeglasses as a result of this. Take care. Tomorrow is our project day. And as you know, we are cleaning copper pans. All right. See you then.